In this video, I'm going to cover the seven mistakes to help you avoid when scaling your cloud business. Because believe me, I've made all of them and I learned from my experience to help you avoid them and to scale faster. So why do we want to scale in the first place? Well, for me, it was because I nearly lost my life back in 2018. Now, I'd been eight years in my own business and I'd done pretty well, but to be honest, I hadn't scaled as fast as we would have liked. And that meant that when I nearly lost my life, you can see me here in ICU, I woke up after having a kidney removed to get a new one in. It just went really paired shaped and I was very lucky to survive it. And that really made me think about the fact that if I had have actually scaled faster, could have taken money out of the business and therefore protected my family a lot better than I had. Fortunately, I pulled through and also had a fantastic kidney transplant from one of my best mates, and I went and worked on dialysis for a while, and I was able to bounce back, and I was really able to scale the business that uh, that fast that we ended up exiting it in the uh, back end of 2019. But I want you to avoid some of the mistakes so you can get to freedom quicker. So what are they? So the first one is in love with your own platform, right? And you might be in that situation at the moment. You actually care more about the features. You know, the vendors send you leads and you get so involved in all the features in the platform, you actually forget about the result that the business owner wants. And you think about some of the platforms that you use. You might only use 20% of the features to get 80% of the result. And once you've got that result, that's it. But often we get caught in our platform, like we drank Kool-Aid of the Podio platform as an example, and really thought that you know it did so many things and we showed so many things and people got bored or got overwhelmed in demos and we just didn't scale it as quick as we'd like. So I think that's number one, falling in love with your platform or whoever you're representing, whether it's Salesforce, Microsoft, you know, ClickUp, Monday, whoever it may be. The second is the inability to let go. Right, you might be nodding right now because you've had this. And look, believe me, I've had 28 years in in uh, business. I spent 18 at Coca-Cola, where we're very lucky because we're a very well-run business. We had lots of cash that we could actually let go because we had the team to do it. But when I started my own business, uh, and you know, as a cloud. Con uh, consulting business, we just didn't let go. And and because you over-service in the beginning, you think, well, you know, I can just continue to do that. Well, it doesn't work that way. And I'm sure you've experienced it. And even as early as today, I actually went to uh, write a post for our new community called the uh, Cloud Consultants Collective. And I thought, well, is this really what I should be doing? And really, I should be doing three key things, leadership, strategy and actually the end sale not doing everything else and even today i learned that hey i still haven't let go as much as i like so i think that will prevent you from scaling so we've gone through two mistakes in love with your platform the inability to sell so let's hit number three and that is mistiming hiring right often we hire people right at the last minute when we're desperate to do it and then what do we do we take the wrong person on and then it doesn't work. Have you ever had that situation? I know I have several times. And a, a, a boss of mine once said you should always be hiring. So whenever you're talking to someone and you think that's a perfect candidate for a certain role in the future, either bring them on board early or get ready to talk to them. So have a list, right? But always be recruiting. Always be looking for that next person ahead of time, that next hat that you're going to take off. So that's number three. Number four is not knowing your numbers. Once again, it's very lucky at Coca-Cola where you had to know your numbers. It was 150 years old. They really have perfected their systems globally and you got your numbers, but you had to know them. But so often I'll work with cloud consultants where they might have come from corporate where there wasn't, they weren't in a finance role, someone else did all of that for them. Now they're in their own business. They don't know it and they don't know the unit economics of the business. They don't quite understand exactly how they could improve the business model to work smarter, not harder. They're doing a lot of project work rather than retainer, as an example. So really knowing those numbers is important. It also is important for when you can take money out of the business, like I said, to compound it, but also you can bring on team members if you know your numbers. The fourth one, uh, sorry, that's the fourth, not knowing your numbers. The fifth one is customization, right? So we start by helping everybody and we do everything. And, and you know, you want to over-service people. You want to prove to the vendor or the platform that you're working for that you're the guys to send work to. I get it. I did the exact same thing. But then you start continuing, or sorry, you start changing things and every all of a sudden it becomes very difficult. And it's like a, a chain, right? The longer the chain, the more damage. And the more processes and the more things you've got in there, 
becomes a lot harder. And I know sometimes, you know, you might lose some clients by tightening it up and saying, no, this is the way we work. But believe me, the quicker you get there, the better. It also makes it easier in your project management platform. You use ClickUp as an example to actually run the business a lot smoother. Number six, the second last, is selling one-to-one. Right, so we've all done it. Once again, you know, we get leads sent through from the vendor or we go on LinkedIn outreach or we get referrals and it's all one-to-one. But if you, you know, if you just stop for a moment and think just how much of your time and you're the most expensive person in the business is actually selling and sometimes unqualifying people, right? Wouldn't it be better, and I'll give you a classic example. I had a client that was selling a, a finance platform and, um, on behalf of the uh, vendor. Uh, vendor. Vendor was the software. And I said, why don't we go to private equity firms Get them on board and then they've got a portfolio of 50 clients maybe and then we can do a webinar to the 50 once we've proven the wins for all stakeholders. It worked brilliantly, right? So for you, just have a think about it at the moment. Even pause and write down who do you think your key stakeholders could be that could give you one to many sales. You only need you know three or four of them for the year and that can absolutely scale your business fast. And the last one is serving everyone you've all heard it you know identify your ideal client you know pick a niche niche wherever you are in the world and you know we all we all do it where you've got the vendor sending you multiple leads across multiple platforms or verticals i should say and that's fine but have a process to do them quickly but then be known for a particular vertical so for us when we sold copper sales crm we actually picked agencies, right? It was a perfect fit. They all had Gmail. Copper works beautifully with Gmail or G Suite, I should say, or whatever they call it now. And uh, sorry for you uh, down in the comments there. Any uh, Google partner, please uh, correct me. But, um, you know, we actually went and said, no, look, we just do agencies. So it made it really easy. And we knew that agencies love the product. So when someone came into Copper, they would say, well, actually, we'll go to these guys, scale my empire, because it's easy, right? So for you, what is a vertical you can do? Then you can have case studies, you can know the lingo, it really works fast. So they're the seven key mistakes to avoid. I'll just, once again, wrap, wrap up. One is in love with your platform. Two is inability to let go third is mistiming that hiring or recruiting the fourth is not knowing your numbers fifth the customization sixth is selling one to one and seven is serving everyone if you like what you saw today and you're not a subscriber just hit the subscribe so you get more videos like this in the future if you are and you'd love to share it with someone else please do whether it's 5 10 15 people you know they'll think you're a rock star by sharing this because they may be Uh, looking for opportunities on how to scale faster. Also, if you go to paulhigginsmentoring.com forward slash podcast, episode 370, I give you the full breakdown in a little bit more detail of this topic. And last but not least, please take action to scale your business faster so that you can live with more freedom.